Well, hello and welcome to day 298 of our daily Bible reading. Let's begin with a word of prayer. God of love, may your spoken word be what guides me in all that I do and say today. Amen. And today we continue in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 48, verse 1 through chapter 49, verse 22. Concerning Moab, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Alas, for Nebo, it is laid waste. Kiriathaim is put to shame, it is taken. The fortress is put to shame and broken down. The renown of Moab is no more. In Heshbon they plan evil against her. Come, let us cut her off from being a nation. You also, O madmen, shall be brought to silence. The sword shall pursue you. Listen, a cry goes up from Horonaim, desolation and great destruction. Moab is destroyed, her little ones cry out. For at the ascent of Luhith, they go up weeping bitterly. For at the descent of Horonaim, they have heard the distressing cry of anguish. Flee, save yourselves, be like a wild ass in the desert. Surely, because you trusted in your strongholds and your treasures, you also shall be taken. Chemosh shall go out into exile with his priests and his attendants. The destroyer shall come upon every town, and no town shall escape. The valley shall perish, and the plain shall be destroyed, as the Lord has spoken. Set aside salt for Moab, for she will surely fall. Her towns shall become a desolation, with no inhabitant in them. Accursed is the one who is slack in doing the work of the Lord, and accursed is the one who keeps back the sword from bloodshed. Moab has been at ease from his youth, settled like wine on its dregs. He has not been emptied from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into exile. Therefore his flavor has remained, and his aroma is unspoiled. Therefore the time is surely coming, says the Lord, when I shall send to him decanters to decant him and empty vessels and empty his vessels and break his jars in pieces. Then Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. How can you say we are heroes and mighty warriors? Moab is destroyed and his towns have gone up and the choices of his young men have gone down to his to slaughter says the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. The calamity of Moab is near at hand, and his doom approaches swiftly. Mourn over him, all you his neighbors, and all who know his name. Say, how the mighty scepter is broken, the glorious staff. Come down from glory and sit on the parched ground, and throne daughter Dibon. For the destroyer of Moab has come up against you. He has destroyed your strongholds. Stand by the road and watch, you inhabitant of Aurora. Ask the man fleeing and the woman escaping. Say, what has happened? Moab is put to shame, for it is broken down. Wail and cry. Tell it by the Arnon that Moab is laid waste. Judgment has come upon the tableland, upon Holon and Jaza, and Mephaeth, and Dibon, and Nebo, and Beth Diblatheum, and Kiriathaim, and Beth Gamal, and Beth Meon, and Kiriath, and Bozra, and all the towns of the land of Moab far and near. The horn of Moab is cut off, and his arm is broken, says the Lord. Make him drunk because he magnified himself against the Lord. Let Moab wallow in his vomit. He too shall become a laughingstock. Israel was a laughing stock for you, though he was not caught among thieves, but whenever you spoke of him, you shook your head. Leave the towns and live on the rock, O inhabitants of Moab. Be like the dove that nests on the sides of the mouth of a gorge. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud of his loftiness, his pride and his arrogance and the haughtiness of his heart. I myself know his insolence, says the Lord. His boasts are false, his deeds are false. 
Therefore I wail for Moab. I cry out for all Moab, for the people of Kirhiris I mourn. More than for Jazer I weep for you, O vine of Sibma. Your branches crossed over the sea, reached as far as Jazer. Upon your summer fruits and your vintage, the destroyer has fallen. Gladness and joy have been taken away from the fruitful land of Moab. I have stopped the wine from the wine presses. No one treads them with shouts of joy. The shouting is not the shout of joy. From the cry of Heshbon to Elile, as far as Jahaz, they utter their voice. From Zoar to Horonaim, and Eglath Shilashiah, for even the waters of Nimrim have become desolate. And I will bring to an end in Moab, says the Lord, those who offer sacrifice at a high place and make offerings to their gods. Therefore my heart moans for Moab like a flute, and my heart moans like a flute for the people of Kirhiris, for the riches they gained have perished, for every head is shaved and every beard cut off. On all the hands there are gashes, and on the loins sackcloth. On all the housetops of Moab and in the squares there is nothing but lamentation, for I have broken Moab like a vessel that no one wants, says the Lord. How it is broken, how they wail, how Moab has turned his back in shame. So Moab has become a derision and a horror to all his neighbors. For thus says the Lord, Look, he shall swoop down like an eagle and spread his wings against Moab. The towns shall be taken and the strongholds seized. The hearts of the warriors of Moab on that day shall be like the heart of a woman in labor. Moab shall be destroyed as a people, because he magnified himself against the Lord. Terror, pit, and trap are before you, O inhabitants of Moab, says the Lord. Everyone who flees from the terror shall fall into the pit, and everyone who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the trap. For I will bring these things upon Moab in the year of their punishment, says the Lord. In the shadow of Heshbon, fugitives stop exhausted, for a fire has gone out from Heshbon, a flame from the house of Sion. It has destroyed the forehead of Moab, the scalp of the people of Tumult. Woe to you, O Moab! The people of Chemosh have perished, for your sons have been taken captive and your daughters into captivity. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in the latter days, says the Lord. Thus far is the judgment on Moab. Chapter 49, Judgment on the Ammonites. Concerning the Ammonites, thus says the Lord, Has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? Why then has Milcom dispossessed Gad and his people settled in its towns? Therefore the time is surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sound the battle alarm against Rabbah and the Ammonites. It shall become a desolate mound, and its villages shall be burned with fire. Then Israel shall dispossess those who dispossessed him, says the Lord. Wail, O Heshbon, for I is laid waste. Cry out, O daughters of Rabbah. Put on sackcloth, lament, and slash yourselves with whips. For Milcom shall go into exile with his priests and his attendants. Why do you boast in your strength? Your strength is ebbing. O faithless daughter, who trusted in her treasures, saying, Who will attack me? I am going to bring terror upon you, says the Lord God of hosts, from all your neighbors, and you will be scattered each headlong, with no one to gather the fugitives. But afterward I will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites, says the Lord. Judgment on Edom Concerning Edom, thus says the Lord of hosts, Is there no longer wisdom in Teman? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? Flee, turn back, get down low, inhabitants of Dedan. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time when I punish him. If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? If thieves came by night, 
even they would pillage only what they wanted. But as for me, I have stripped Esau bare. I have uncovered his hiding places, and he is not able to conceal himself. His offspring are destroyed, his kinsfolk and his neighbors, and he is no more. Leave your orphans, I will keep them alive, and let your widows trust in me. For thus says the Lord, if those who do not deserve to drink the cup still have to drink it, shall you be the one to go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, you must drink it. For by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, that Bozrah shall become an object of horror and ridicule, a waste and an object of cursing, and all her towns shall be perpetual waste. I have heard tidings from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Gather yourselves together and come against her, and rise up for battle. For I will make you least among the nations, despised by humankind. The terror you inspire and the pride of your heart have deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rock, who hold the height of the hill, although you make your nest as high as the eagles, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. Edom shall become an object of horror. Everyone who passes by it will be horrified and will hiss because of all its disasters. As when Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbors were overthrown, says the Lord, no one shall live there, nor shall anyone settle in it. Like a lion coming up from the thickets of the Jordan to a perennial pasture, I will suddenly chase Edom away from it, and I will appoint over it whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who can summon me? Who is the shepherd who can stand before me? Therefore, hear the plan that the Lord has made against Edom, and the purposes that he has formed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the little ones of the flock shall be dragged away. Surely their folds shall be appalled at their fate. At the sound of their fall, the earth shall tremble. The sound of their cry shall be heard at the Red Sea. Look, he shall mount up and swoop down like an eagle and spread his wings against Bozrah. And the heart of the warriors of Edom on that day shall be like the heart of a woman in labor. Second Timothy chapter 4 In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching, for the time is coming when people will not put up with sound teaching. But having their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, be sober in everything, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Personal Instructions Do your best to come to me soon for Demos, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia. Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me in ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. You also must be aware of him, for he strongly opposed our message. 
At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Final greetings and benediction. Greet Prisca and Achilla and the household of Onesephorus. Erastus remained in Corinth. Trophimus I left ill in Miletus. Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Proverbs chapter 26, verses 9 through 12. Like a thorn bush brandished by the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like an archer who wounds everybody is one who hires a passing fool or drunkard. Like a dog that returns to its vomit is a fool who reverts to his folly. Do you see people wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for fools than for them. Well, this has been the Word of God and the Word of Life. Thanks be to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.